Hey everyone, and welcome to the Uncorked Corner podcast, where we cover the full spread of food and beverage industry topics. My name is Bianca, PR and marketing professional by day and food and wine connoisseur by night. And my name is Nick, an accountant with a passion for barbecue, beer, and whiskey. Today we welcome Cade Courtley. Cade is a former Navy SEAL and is the founder and CEO of Victory Coffees, a veteran-owned and operated coffee company. Victory Coffees is committed to roasting award-winning coffee and delivering it straight to its members to make sure everyone has access to a great fresh cup of coffee at great prices. Kick back with your morning coffee as we talk to Cade about everything that Victory Coffees has to offer. So hi, Cade. Welcome to the podcast. We're excited to have you on today. Let's start by having you introduce yourself to our audience and give us a bit of information about your background. Uh, hi, my name is Cade Courtley. Uh, grew up in Colorado. I joined uh, the Navy after I graduated from the University of San Diego. I was commissioned as an ensign and went to SEAL training shortly thereafter and spent nine years uh, active duty as a Navy SEAL, platoon commander, and a sniper. And when I got out, um, a few months later, 9-11 happened, and I wanted to get back in the game, so to speak. And I did so by way of working with the uh, agency. And I did that multiple deployments off and on for about six, seven years. And uh, during which time I uh, learned the incredible value of an amazing cup of coffee when you're in a place like Iraq or Afghanistan. To be honest with you, that was the entire motivation for why I started Victory Coffees. It's, you know, when things are tough and a lot of people are having tough times right now, but when you're in a place like Iraq or Afghanistan, if you can just enjoy a half an hour and an amazing cup of coffee, that's pretty good. And that is why I started Victory Coffees. That's awesome. And we saw that you just completed the SEAL swim across the Hudson in New York. That was with the GI Go Fund. What was that like? And can you tell us a little bit more about your involvement with that? It was an amazing experience. I mean, it really was uh, for a number of reasons. We raised a ton of money for an incredible uh, or, you know, charity organization helping out veterans. That's awesome. On a personal level, I got to hang out with 54 of my Navy SEAL brothers for a weekend. I, uh, I got what I would say is kind of one of those lifetime moments that I'll never forget when I rolled over onto my back, stared up at the Statue of Liberty, and swam past her. I was just like, man. And the only thing that beat that was hopping out uh, there in Manhattan and the bagpipes started playing and we ran to the 9-11 Memorial behind two fire trucks holding an American flag. It was amazing. That's awesome. We definitely saw some of the pictures of that. It's great that you were able to get out and raise money for that. Uh, being a veteran yourself, uh, are there any organizations that you are particularly close with that you really do a lot of work with that help give back to veterans you know, on a more regular basis? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, uh, you mentioned it and I really appreciate it. I'll let me mention it again, the folks that sponsored the uh, event, uh, the SEAL Swim in New York, it's uh, GI Go Fund and an incredible organization doing great stuff and putting all the money they raised right back towards helping veterans. Uh, and then I'm also involved with the Gary Sinise Foundation and uh, another incredible organization. I would challenge anybody to tell me a civilian that has done more than Gary Sinise for veterans and active duty military and first responders. He, he's just an incredible person. He puts his money where his mouth is and he takes that money and sends it to, to folks like first responders, veterans. So yeah, th there's two like amazing organizations right there. That's fantastic. And we appreciate your service and everyone's service. It definitely doesn't go unnoticed with us. Uh, so to get into the coffee a bit, when did you actually kick off Victory Coffee? How long have you been around? So we just had our uh, five-year anniversary in May of this year. Um, so we've been going strong ever since. Uh, it, it's been a hell of a lot of fun. Look, if anybody tells you starting your own business and being an entrepreneur is really easy and you have all this flexibility, well, that's somebody who doesn't have a business that's running anymore, okay? <laughs> Being an entrepreneur and starting your own business is incredibly challenging. I couldn't even compare it to some of the stuff I did in the SEALs. I mean, obviously different challenges, but just as tough. I mean, it really is. You're dealing with 
all sorts of different issues and you're up 22 hours a day working on it if you want it to be successful. But the payoff is also great because the harder you work, the better chance of success you have. You're not in a cubicle and just a number working for an organization. You are out there leading the charge, taking the risks, and then if it ends up being successful, you can kind of pat yourself on the back a little bit. But don't take too long doing that because you got to get back to work. Absolutely. That is the truth. <laughs> what was the first copy that you actually launched when you opened the business? Did you have a bunch of them to start or did you have like one, you know, beginner brew that is kind of like the namesake? Uh, so um, basically on our launch, I wanted all of your primary roasts and a decaf. So we had an, we had an espresso, a dark, a medium, a light and a decaf. And the mar basically what I want to do with the branding of Victory Coffees was go back to a time when everybody in the United States liked the United States and everybody had a sense of we're all in this together. It feels like centuries ago, but it was only back in the 40s, you know, during World War II when everybody, hey, we all got a pitch in to do what we can. So that's where uh, I call her Betty Bean, uh, modeled after Rosie the Riveter. Um, and our entire um, branding is based on that time frame, you know, that, that time in the, in the 40s and and maybe even the early 50s. So all my uh, coffee roasts are, so our espresso is the Admiral Espresso. We've got the Leatherneck Dark Roast. We've got the Sailor Medium Roast. We have the Trooper Light Roast. And sorry, Air Force, but somebody had to be decaf. So we have the Airman Decaf. Uh, nice. And to get into the business model, it's something that not a lot of companies I've seen do with shipping the beans. Someone orders the beans, they place an order, and it looked like they get weekly shipments of the beans to keep them fresh? Uh, so what we do is the business model for Victory Coffees, uh, I wanted to set this up. So A, it was a recurring revenue uh, type of model. So we have members and the members will get their coffee every month on the anniversary of the day they signed up. So we do that on a monthly rotation. And uh, absolutely, we ship every Monday to ensure they're getting the most freshly roasted coffee available. And it shows up at their door two days later via priority mail. And um, they can go on, they can change the type, they can change the quantity, they can add, you know, they, they can do whatever they want. They can even, hey, we didn't drink that much this month. They can skip a month. It's so easy to do. It's literally two or three uh, uh, keystrokes and, and, and you can change, modify, it, whatever you want to do. But just the fact that they know, hey, this is showing up my, at my door every month. It's freshly roasted within a week. And, you know, I got to tell you, it's an award-winning coffee. And uh, if you can get an award-winning coffee delivered to your door, all you got to do is open your door and open the box. And you get that for what amounts to be $1 or a buck a cup. It's a, it's a kind of a no-brainer. And uh, that's the feedback I get from my customers. And they love it. You know, convenience quality. It's right there at Victory Coffees. And for our listeners who are hearing about Victory Coffee for the first time, their roasts come in bags for home brewing as well as in pod form. Um, Kate, can you tell us a bit about the various roasts that you do offer and maybe some of the top sellers that you've had and, and right now? Yeah, so like I discussed earlier, um, we've, got the, we've got an espresso, a dark, medium, a light, and a decaf. So those are our primary roasts. Yes, uh, about two months after we launched, we got into the pods. Uh, you can't say K-cup because you'll get sued. So we have single serving pods that are called um, <clears throat> sorry, soldier cups. And what we do with the soldier cup is people, again, love the convenience. I stick it in there and a minute later, I've got a hot cup of coffee. The only complaint is it's really weak. Well, we went and I spent about two months coming up with the strongest blend I could to put in that K-cup. And unlike some of the competitors, we're cramming 11 grams into each K-cup. And I can honestly tell you, we have the strongest, I'm sorry, not K-cup. We have the strongest single, single serving pods out there on the market. It is actually a little bit uh, more uh, as far as our sales than our uh, whole bean or ground is. And uh, people, they love them. And for someone that doesn't really know what they want to go with, can you tell us a bit about the Victory Squad sampler that you offer? Yes. Yeah, so uh, great question. Thank you for asking it. Uh, a lot of times folks will be like, well, you know, I don't know which one I like. I don't know the taste. 
So we have the Victory Squad, which is a sample pack of all five of the uh, roasts I discussed in smaller quantities. They come in uh, three ounce bags. So you can try each one and decide for yourself which one you want to order as soon as you're done with the uh, Victory Squad sample pack. And, and it's been very well received. We have almost an 80 to 85% um, people after they do the sample pack become members. Nice. And uh, for you, when you wake up and make your daily coffee, what's your preferred method of brewing? I'm a pour over guy, but I tell you what, it's 96 degrees out right now. So I've been cranking down the cold brew and I love it. I can't get enough of the cold brew. But uh, if I'm going for a hot cup of coffee, I do a pour over. And uh, how do you make that cold brew? Uh, so it's, uh, it's really easy. I take our espresso roast uh, because it's the, you know, well, for obvious reasons, but it, it's one of the higher, or they're all high, high quality, but the flavor and the richness I get out of our espresso roast, our Admiral Espresso, is great. I'll do a medium grind on that. I go ahead. I will literally throw it in uh, a coffee sock. It's a lot like uh, you can get for a tea bag or something like that. But I'll put, geez, I'm probably putting about four ounces ground. I throw it in a bell jar. I fill it with water and I stick it in the refrigerator for 24 hours and it is set to go. And folks, the thing that a lot of people might not know about cold brew, which is different from coffee that's poured over ice is when you're not introducing heat in the process of making your cup of coffee, you don't get the, uh, um, the acidic as well. So if you guys want a really smooth cup of coffee, you don't have to add anything to it, definitely not cream, try doing a cold brew. It's incredible. Definitely something we have to try. Definitely. I haven't really made many cold brews of my own. I drink hot coffee all throughout the year. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so easy. And I think you'd be so surprised. Not only is there a higher ca uh, caffeine content, but like I just talked about, it's so smooth. And it, like I said, it's 96 degrees outside right now. Yep. <laughs> that is it's true. always my go-to whenever we go to a coffee place because it really does get the best flavor and you can really taste the most out of those oh, beans. It's, it's just so good, folks. You got to give it a try. It's so easy to do. If you go to our website, you can actually see a demonstration of start to finish how to make a good cold brew. Cool. So we saw that you also have a podcast of your own. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about what you're doing there and, and where we can listen? Absolutely. So we launched, today is our fourth, yeah, today is our fourth week uh, since we launched. It's called Can You Survive This Podcast? And it's simply educating, entertaining, and saving lives in the podcast space. And some of the guests that we, I, I think I have 22 in the can right now, but I mean, we have anywhere from Rob O'Neill, the Navy SEAL hero that uh, shot Bin Laden, uh, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist. Um, we launched today, Zoe Bell, an amazing top of her game female stunt coordinator, soon to be an incredible director. Um, we have Steve-O coming up. I'm gonna be interviewing Adam Carolla here in a couple of days. That's going to be great. I can't wait for that. Uh, so we've had musicians. We've had, I had a four-star general random that I interviewed a couple weeks ago. So it's really this broad spectrum of incredibly, incredibly entertaining and really smart people talking about all things survival. And the fun part about after I get done with the interview, I get a chance to put them through a hypothetical survival situation, kind of like the old choose your own adventure books. And we find out after about 15 minutes if they survive or not. And it's called, again, Can You Survive This Podcast? I mean, it's on Apple Podcasts, uh, iTunes, YouTube, anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify. So, uh, folks, check it out. It's a lot of fun. And, again, we're saving lives. So that's not bad either. And how have your guests been doing on that? Get a lot of survivors or people not doing you know, too it's, well? It's funny. Some of the ones you think, oh, I don't think they're going to do too well, have surprised the hell out of me. Because it already aired, I can say Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, astronomer, astrophysicist, perfect score. He was amazing. Actually, it shouldn't surprise me because he's about as smart as they come. I literally took like 10 alpha brains just to try and hang with this guy during that interview. Uh, we've had some other folks that I thought would have done better. That was kind of surprising. But yeah, it's really fun. And they really start getting into the competitive nature of it. Like, hey, how did so-and-so do? I was like, yeah, yeah. Better than you, they're like, oh, that's it, man. I'm coming back. So it's, it's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, it sounds like it. And we'll, for anybody who's listening and is interested, we will put the link to the podcast in the description of our podcast so that they oh, can Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> of course. We're always looking to uh, promote everyone else and, and what they're doing. And I think it's such a cool topic and just very interesting. I haven't really listened well, to anything about I mean, that it's myself. pretty timely, too. Like, we're all going through something that we probably couldn't even imagine six months ago. Uh, and so there is nothing wrong with getting a little bit more information on how to stay alive. Yep, I can't agree more. Uh, now, with your future of your coffee company, do you expect to have more roasts or more blends coming out, uh, different flavors for people to try? You know what? I always wanted to keep it down to the coffee basics, to be honest with you. If you're not happy with one of the five options we have, again, in whole bean ground and uh, single serving pots, if you're not happy with that, I don't know what to tell you because we win awards for the quality of our coffee. We've got enough of a variety. Um, and again, everybody kind of does their own thing with coffee. Maybe they add a ton of this and they add a ton of that. I like it black because if it's really good, you don't have to add anything to it. So, you know, I've, I've gone out there and I've asked folks, but everybody, the, the core group that, that stays with us or the people that come in are like, I'm okay with five choices. And uh, so for now, we're going to stick with that. We might expand our single pod for different options because right now we have, again, I discussed, we, we did put to, uh, everything we could together in our, what we call our battleship blend for the uh, soldier cups. So we might expand that out a little bit, but for the most part, uh, I learned in the military, keep it simple, stupid. And that's what we're doing with Victory Coffees. So you've been around for five years, which means you've been through quite a bunch as an entrepreneur. Are there any standout experiences that you've had? Um, you know, when you're dealing with this, you, something like coffee, sometimes you have some supply issues that, that come up and you're like, oh boy, all right, we, we better come up with a plan B there for where we're going to get uh, our next uh, batch of beans. Um, you know, there's some funny stuff with competition where sometimes it can get a little bit nasty and you got to say, hey, look, 80% of the uh, population drinks coffee. There's plenty of customers to go around. This doesn't have to get nasty. But for the most part, it's been really pretty smooth. I just figure if I can offer a great product at a really reasonable price and it's convenient, and people always say, well, you can't do those three things. You can't do convenience, price, and quality. Well, we're doing that at Victory Coffees. And so if I just stay to that and stay to our mission statement of trying to give people a little bit of sanctuary every day, then that's what we'll do. And it's working now five plus years. So stick with it. And in making an award-winning coffee, I imagine you have to use really consistent, really great ingredients. So when you're sourcing the beans for the coffee, uh, where do you turn to? So the great thing is when I first started out, I partnered up with uh, two brothers. Their dad had been doing this, former Marine, their dad. Uh, he'd been up to doing it for about 23 years at this point. So he knew everything. He'd been down to all of the farms. He knew all the ranch or, or all the farmers. And as a result of that incredible amount of experience, I was able to hop on board and basically he was so cool and helping me out. And he's like, yes, that's the way to go. I would stay away from that. This is a good, small, medium, medium sized farm. You're going to get the quality from that. Stay away from those guys because they're selling to the big boys and the stuff sits around a warehouse for a year. And they say they're certified organic, but that just isn't the case. It's kind of a scam where somebody pays a lot of money and they get that sticker, regardless of what kind of pesticides are up, upstream or uphill or what the crop used to be used for. So, yeah, I mean, I was really fortunate to have a, a former Marine that sort of pulled me along and showed me the tricks and uh, God bless him for it. it. It was amazing. It really gave me a, a foot up on the uh, quality side and, and just having had those relationships with those small, medium-sized farms down Central South America. Cool. And when turning to your daily roast, what do you look for in sort of flavors of coffee? I know different regions uh, of beans give you a different sort of flavor, whether it's more chocolatey or earthy or mm -hmm. uh, what have you. So what do you normally look for? Well, it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll bounce between my different roasts. I, right now, I've been on, a, uh, on the Admiral Espresso kick. I just I, I love it. And that comes from South America. That's a Brazil. And uh, I've been all over that. But in about two weeks, I'll be like, all right, I'm feeling like light roast right now. And that comes from Central America. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny with anything. Maybe if you keep having the same dinner after a while, you're like, okay, I'm ready to shift gears. And I do that with coffee. Uh, but right now, I've been, uh, I've been just putting down the Admiral Espresso. 
And uh, again, it's been so great in the cold brew. So where are the majority of your customers and I should say members since everyone kind of subscribes to that membership model, where are most of them based? Are they near you? Do you find it's a lot of people in your community or do you kind of have people all over the U S that are ordering from you? We have, we have members in all 50 States currently. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I tried to dive into the analytics a little bit and there are maybe a few more members that come from, maybe more conservative states or a little bit more red states because our whole thing is about being a veteran owned company and, and being very patriotic. But that said, somebody who likes good coffee, they're all over the spectrum of their belief system, their ideology. Uh, and, and that's great. Coffee is sort of the, that, I guess it's maybe one of the few remaining common factors among people with very different ideas and beliefs. A good cup of coffee is great for a Democrat, Republican or an independent, you know, it, so yeah, we, we have a very diverse membership and, uh, and always looking for more members, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it really has. I, I sell coffee for a living and I have a podcast where I'm saving lives. And I can tell you if I go a couple of days without a good cup of coffee, my life is in danger. So I'm kind of doing a little <laughs> bit of both at the same time. Yeah. That's part of the reason Nick and I started this podcast. It's like, what, what are things that everybody loves and kind of Unites too, and it's coffee, beer, wine, food. Absolutely. <laughs> All of our favorite things. <laughs> no, I love it. It's great. I mean, you're guys are saving lives too. So, <laughs> gotta keep people entertained. If without the coffee in the morning, I don't know if this would happen either. So, it's glad that we have you. <laughs> oh, you think the riots are bad in the in north, you know, in some of the hot spots? Try taking people's coffee away. <laughs> this entire country would be on fire. <laughs> yep. Is there anything else that we haven't been able to get to yet that you wanted to mention about your company or your mission? Look, I, uh, I really want to thank anybody and everybody who has been a member and continues to be a member. Uh, again, you're, uh, you guys out there are supporting a veteran owned company. Um, and I support and give back as a result. So once a month, I will go to a different VA hospital in the United States and I will donate upwards of 200 pounds of coffee uh, I've been in, I'm, a, I'm currently in the VA system. I know how challenging that can be. So at the very least, when these veterans show up at a VA hospital and they've got to sit around for an hour or so, it, at least get to enjoy a good cup of coffee from Victory Coffee. So I guess, I guess that would be a good way to wrap, wrap this up. But uh, that's what we're doing, guys. Um, great. So where can people find you on Instagram, social media, online, your website? How can people find your coffee? It's really easy, guys. VictoryCoffees.com. And then you can Google that. We've got all the social links on our website at the bottom. Uh, but just go to VictoryCoffees.com. And uh, hey, give us a try. I know some people get nervous about a membership thing. You can cancel it anytime. It's as simple as that. There's no like, well, wait, you got to give us 180 days notice in writing and a blood sample and some hair. No, try it. If you're not satisfied, I'll be really surprised. You can go try something else, but uh, give us a try, folks. I think you'll love it. Awesome. I'm sure a lot of people will. We appreciate having you on tonight and taking the time. We look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you. Definitely. Hey, Thank guys, you. it was a pleasure. Thanks for your time and keep up the great work. I love what you guys are doing. Cheers. Thank Sure to follow us on social at Uncorked Corner and on the blog at uncorkedcorner.com for a taste of more food and beverage content. And if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, rate, and review on whatever podcast platform you prefer. Thanks for listening. Thanks.